Welcome to today's 3D print part two of the Michelangelo where I talk about what I think of the machine, modifications I'd make, changes I'd like to see, good, bad, etc. and some sample prints which I know everybody's waiting for so stay tuned. Alrighty, I switched over to my phone because there's interference again, and I'm pretty sure it's the lav mic causing the interference, or at least accepting the interference. I think my power supply is generating the noise, but the noise is coming through the lav mic into the camera, and the camera's freaking out with whatever it's getting over the line. I'm not sure why. I think the mic port in the camera is also a data port. You can plug things into it, I think. And so I think it's receiving spurious data that it doesn't know what to do with. So we switch to this. Um, this is noise free, I just tested it. So you're gonna have a little noise in the rest of the video. Well, you've already seen the rest of the video. So <laughs> as I noted, this was a little bit loose, a little tiny tweak at the wrench, just a little, little eighth of a turn, and now it's nice and tight, no problem. This is tight, this is tight. I didn't have to do anything. The only thing I had to do was to tighten that nut a little bit and tighten the belt tension just a tiny bit. That was it. And the instructions are all in here for how to do that. Um, there are a couple of modifications that I made to the, my printer. I have this one I just opened with you guys so you haven't seen it. So that one hasn't got any modifications but the other one. <laughs> As you see I put the ender spool holders on top. It fits perfectly. It's exactly what this printer needs. Now it's all in one. There's nothing external to this printer. I love the front of this printer, these, this, this control box interface. You have your full-size SD card slot, your screen. It's actually the same screen that's on the Ender 2, except this one's angled toward you, and you have your control knob. Um, the same problem I had before with TiVo, the control knob detent clicks are not synchronized to the motion on the screen. So sometimes you'll turn it and it won't go and you'll have to turn it again. And other times you'll turn it, get to a spot and it'll jump past the spot. I think someone said that you can change that. The instruction manual says that the firmware is available for download. I have not found it yet. So I'm waiting to confirm that, that the firmware is actually downloadable for people who um, rightfully consider that important since this is GPL. Um, I still don't like the tubes that they use. Although on this printer, it's not an issue. I would prefer the nylon webbing that the um, Creality uses, although the split loom is easier to put on. So I can see why they wouldn't do that. Also, as you can see, Bowden tube is way too long. It does not need to be that long. I've shortened mine. That is the full length and it's still not under stress. So I remove that much Bowden tube from my printer. I don't know how much is that. No idea how much it is. Where is my tools? It's over there. I'm not getting it. Um, I'd say four inches. So I just removed that much Bowden tube. I should reduce the slop inside the Bowden tube. I screwed up the print. <laughs> it was air printing because um, I bumped the printer when it was going. And the nature of a non-heated bed, if you don't use a skirt, is that it's not adhered as tightly. With the TiVo print surface, I use glue stick. It just works better. It works way, way better because you want your gap pretty large. Um, if you try to squish, it's just going to peel up the filament as it as it runs. So on this printer without a heated bed, you want a uh, you want less squish. You want almost no squish. You want almost an air gap between the nozzle and the print bed. That combined with the glue stick and a 10% speed rate, 20% speed rate, depending on what your top speed is. Um, you, know, you saw it nice and slow. You want it to come out super hot and sticky and slow, and it just drops onto the glue stick and holds, and it works great. I have no problems printing. This one here, I also replaced the bed with Print and Z. So I peeled off their bed, used alcohol to clean up the adhesive. Already threw that away, and this has a Print and Z surface on it now. Works great, no problems. Um, well, since it's not heated, one of the first things I do is I take a knife and I scrape up the Print and Z surface. Just, just scrape it. Don't cut into it, just scrape it. And then clean it with alcohol works great no problem it sticks like bonkers and still pops off no problem as long as you don't over squish um that's basically the only changes i've made to the printer i do plan to uh, these fans i think are quiet enough i'm gonna leave them alone let's get noisier i am gonna replace this fan with a quiet fan to make it a little quieter but this printer is very very quiet i mean impressively so 
The other nice thing is the firmware is intelligent. When the printer is done printing and it shuts down the steppers, once the internals are cool enough, it turns off the fans. These two fans turn off. Why keep them running? <laughs> so this intelligently turns off those fans when it's finished to print and it waits for you to come back. Um, to put the print and Z on, all I did was loosen up the, uh, the bolt for the optical end stop and I just inched it up a tiny bit to make up for the thicker print and Z. No problem. Worked great. Re-leveled the bed. Not a problem. Um, the Z-Rod is captured. Nice metal bracket up top here with two bolts holding the bearing in place. And it looks like the Z-Rod goes straight through the bearing. Um, it's a weird little setup on the bed here. In order to make the printer shorter, you see normally like on the ender, the, X, the Y stepper motor hangs off the back like this pulley here. Okay, like Kind of like this actually. So here's your extrusion and the motor hangs off out of back here. And you get your um, attachment. Well, they don't want to do that here because it's going to make it bigger. It's going to be hanging out the back. So instead, they do something very interesting. The motor on here. What is this? Oh, just FEP film. It does this. I'm going to draw this for you. It's really interesting. So here's your rail. And then you have a pulley. A pulley. Then you have two more pulleys, and then you have this pulley. And the belt actually runs through like this. It actually runs through like that. These two pulleys are actually further out this way, so this belt stays straight. I can draw that better. Like this. So this is your two endpoints, and here is where it connects to the bed. And then these two pulleys allow it to change 90 degrees, and this is your stepper motor. To tension the belt, you loosen the four screws holding the stepper motor and pull the stepper to the side and then retighten it. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. I do wish in the future they would move that stepper just a little further away so that I can replace the knobs with bigger knobs for the print bed. But this, your limiting factor is this rear knob here is very close to the cap on this pulley stand. So you're not going to be able to replace that with a much bigger knob. You can double the size of it. That's it. You can't go triple, quadruple like I normally like to go. But I can say this. In 200 hours of printing, I've never had to re-level the printer. Once I got it leveled, once I got it working correctly and I got the correct speed and temperature for the filament, I have never had to re-level the printer and hold. These are very, very snug. There's enough tension on there that it does not give. I also really like how they did the bed. It's four point, which I prefer. It's just a little easier to level. Might not be as reliable, but it's easier. But the bed has cutouts and those cutouts are bent down 90 degrees and that's where the belt attaches. So no, none of this stud going into the bed and then your belt wrapping around that stud, that's never going anywhere. That's not moving. That, that, is, that is a thick Y carriage plate and it is attached well. It is, this will never fail. That is ingenious. That is a fantastic design. I really, really like how they did that with this small printer. That's going to make this an ex if the electronics are. I can tell you this: if the electronics are reliable, this printer is reliable because the mechanicals are rock solid. They really nailed it. They knocked it out of the park with this. I am disappointed it doesn't have a heated bed. It should have a heated bed. I really think it should. What I would like to see them do is maybe have a Michelangelo Plus. Same size bed, but make it heated, and uh, preferably AC heated. Mm -hmm. Little AC heat pad. Come on, TiVo, you've already got it for the tornado. And then I would like to see um, the printer not come fully assembled. Have one assembly step. Have this entire gantry do like they did with the i3 Mega. Instead of having these wires feed into the printer, have plugs here, so that this entire gantry can be removed. As one big whole unit. Even with the stepper and everything, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how practical that is. 
okay? And then make it so that I can, um, this the, the reason to make it removable is that this can be flat packed because I think the reason they limited it to 150 millimeters is that they had to fit it inside of a box within certain constraints to avoid excess shipping costs for oversized container. And adding 50 millimeters to the height, I believe would have exceeded that. Not sure. I also don't know how practical it is to add a piece of extrusion to a piece of extrusion. Like, can you put two together and how will that affect quality? I don't know. But if this was a removable piece, they can have this whole thing completely assembled. And then all you would have to do, have the stepper attached to the rail instead of attached to the plate here. This way you can take this whole entire thing and just insert it. And then um, just put the two screws in the bottom and then plug the plugs in here and you're done. And that would allow it to go to 200, and I would go to 225 millimeters like the Ender. The Ender is rated for 200, but it can really go to 226. So I go to 225 as a max. Because that would dramatically expand what you can print with this. Because there's a lot of things that we print that are taller. Now maybe that's just me. Maybe there's no market for that. Or the Ender 2 fills that market just fine. But just an idea if they want to make a Michelangelo Plus heated bed taller Z. Otherwise... I really have no complaints. There's no QC issues. Um, everything that was supposed to be tight was tight. This was a little loose, but that 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 can come loose in shipping. And as you can see, it printed just fine, even with it being loose. I tightened it afterwards. So let's get on to what you came here for. How does it print? <laughs> I told you this is going to be a long video. So of course, the very first things I print are a Marvin. Let me try to make it so you guys can see this. Where's the camera? It's over here. There we go. I got a big light right behind this, and it might be too much light. Okay. Very clean Marvin. Keychains intact. Very low zitting. I mean, really, really low zitting. And I think part of that is its retraction speed and its movement speed. So I've incorporated that high-speed retraction jerk and um, high-speed movement speed in my ender prints, and they are improving as well. Then you have your Benji. A very nice Benchy. I have zero complaints about this Benchy. It's a little thin on the top of the deck and the top of the tower, but that might be my extrusion multiplier being slightly low. I think I was running at 97%, now I run at 98%. The back is perfectly readable. This printed in an hour and nine minutes. The bottom, perfectly readable. Took me two tries to get that to stick right. I did not have to use a brim. I was able to get it to work without a brim, and it is flat. So it did not warp, but that took a little practice. Hot and slow for your first layer. So the test prints are out of the way. What's the first thing I'm going to feed this printer? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, third test print, the vase. I printed the rocket, of course. You know, got to print the rocket. That's inevitable. It looks a little rough, but that's because whew, I had this thing going. I think I had it programmed for 60 millimeters per second in the slicer. Now, of course, that gets tempered by your acceleration jerk, size of your model, what part of the model you're printing. There's a bunch. 60 millimeters per second in your slicer is the maximum speed you can attain under optimal conditions. So a straight line across the whole thing, you might hit 60 millimeters a second in the middle. Otherwise, it's going to be slowing down for acceleration and deceleration. It's going to be slowing down for outer layer, it's going to be slowing down for infill, you know, different variables you said. As you can see, I used a brim on this. Um, those things are all going to temper how it works. Um, so I decided to crank the speed up. I had a thing running at 300%. I mean, this thing is just going... <laughs> I was like, uh, it got to the point where the plastic itself was starting to um, not be able to extrude properly, but it held... I mean, as you can see, it worked. It's not perfect, but it worked at that high speed. So these things can work at pretty high speed. The edges are clean. They're sharp. No, I stepped on this, so that's why it's cracked. So, first print. It's called a Michelangelo. What's the first print? Well, it's obvious. You have to print David. Let me kill some of this light. There we go. Look at that. That is truly amazing. I printed the one with built-in supports. And it looks stunning. It looks like stone. It really is amazing. This cheap white PLA worked really well for it. This is my total pack PLA. I love that stuff. 
is printed in less than eight hours. I think it was, I think this was six hours, 44 minutes it printed this in. It's either 6.44 or 7.44. So I went to bed, I woke up, this was done. Very, very impressive. I will have pictures on Twitter of this. Maybe I'll put pictures at the end too. So then I printed, of course, the rabbit. It's Easter time, so I have to print a rabbit. So here's the rabbit candy dish. This is at full size. This is 100%. I think Bugman made this. No, this is 3D with us, I think. It's either Bugman or 3D with us. I think 3D with us is the one who made this. Yeah, 3D with us. He made the Easter Bunny planter. I'll have links in the description, of course. Very nice. I have zero complaints. I mean... It's doing a good job. Then, of course, tried a different color. Whistle. <laughs> Works fine. V29. I like my V29 whistles. I have no complaints. That's the bottom layer. It looks great. And it was pretty, pretty fast, too. It's a good printer. I tried to print Mood City. That was before I got it leveled correctly for this filament because this filament's a little stretchy. Okay? And it failed halfway through. And as you can see, it was warping off the bed. I need to add a brim, a nice big brim to this because that will allow you to tweak the bed level as it moves in and comes back. And uh, But once I get that bed level, I'll be fine. But as you can see, what it did print looks fantastic. It knocked it right off the print bed. <laughs> Very cool. I'm impressed. I mean, it works. I did Maker Coin. So here is Protopasta's um, Clover Leaf Metallic Green. I colored in the tops with um, Sharpie. All the letters in the back are readable. It just did a very good job. It even got the little tiny lines. Those were actually less than um, 0.4 millimeters. So I had to use um, single extrusion fill, you know, where it'll adjust the extrusion to print things that are technically too small to print. And as you can see, it printed them just fine. It did a good job. And it did this in an hour, hour and two minutes it did this. So then I want to do my nose cone. I want to see how good it comes out. That's where you can see this printer is not quite as good as an Ender 2. The Ender 2 is a higher quality. But I'm going to temper that with most people will never be able to tell the difference. Ever. I can tell the difference. But that's because I'm making a hundred of these things. The average person, if you hand them these two nose cones, they'll never notice the difference. So these are the exact same PLA. I had to make a squatty nose cone since this can't print a full height nose cone. Uh, these were both printed in two hours, so at high speed. This was not a slow print. I did them fast. This is HDPLA V2 or 3 um, Galactic Empire Purple, and this is Cloverleaf Metallic Green. So the exact same PLA, different color. This is off the ender. This is off the Michelangelo. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you can already see what I'm talking about. This color shift is because of a speed change. When it got to these layers and was doing them with the infill, same thing up here, it slowed down a little bit, so the color changed. When it got to, or actually it sped up for some reason. For some reason, this part here sped up. And then when it got done, the infill, it slowed down a little bit again, and the result is a change in color. I'm going to limit the speed of this just because I like the color better at the slightly slower speed. I think this is like 80 millimeters, 90 millimeters a second, and this is like 100, 110 millimeters a second. Of course, again, that's max speed, so it wasn't actually doing that speed the whole time, but it, it was going pretty fast. Much faster than I normally go. Can you see it yet? Do you see the banding? See how there's like, almost like... Um, caterpillar banding along the length of the cone and that is a physical defect I can feel that so I can feel those bands they are very subtle they do not affect the final product as far as concerned I'd be totally happy selling this nose cone to anybody oh hey there you go now you can really see it see it right there in the shiny part right over here 
See it? Look at that. Now look at the under one. See? None. It is virtually perfect. See? Not one single out of place line. Well, with this one, there's a consistent out of place all the way up the side. Okay? I get a similar result from the TiVo Tornado. That's the that's a similar difference that I see between the CR10 print and the TiVo Tornado print, which is why I still think the CR10 is superior to the Tornado. But again, that's a different most people won't notice. Um, it's a little worse on the Tornado. It's very 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 subtle on the Michelangelo. Do not let that dissuade you. This is a fantastic printer. I am ecstatic that I managed to get two of them. TiVo sent me one, and Gearbest sent me one. <laughs> I was like, I, I thought I was talking to the same person. No, I was talking to two different people, not realizing it. And they both sent me one. <laughs> so, these machines are going to get used. They're going to get used a lot. In fact, I might even be running one of these at Murph. If I go to Murph, I'm going to take one of these with me and just run it there. Because I can run this off my battery. Because it takes less power. Because you only have to run the heater on the, on the hot end. But, um, suggestions. Shorten that bottom tube. Knock four inches off it. Three or four inches. Use your best judgment. Um, glue stick on the hotbed. It helps a lot. It really does. And um, every now and then, wipe it down and reapply. Um, you can print fast. Uh, my standard speed for this printer is 80 millimeters a second for a maximum default print speed with an under speed for outer layer of 90% or 80%, depending on what kind of quality I want. And um, infill, I run it at 100%. Um, except I lower the speed of the first layer to 10 or 20% depending on what I'm printing. If what I'm printing is relatively simple, I'll run it at 20%. If it's very complicated, like all the different letters and stuff like this on the coin, then I'll run it at 10% and run it hot. So run your hot end 20 to 25 degrees hotter than you would normally run your PLA. So um, don't go too hot, of course. So if you run your PLA at 220, then you just go to 230. Um, but run it hot and run it slow. You want it sticky. Use a brim if you can, because that will help. Um, that's it. Then once you get that first layer down, once that first layer is stuck and there's no issues, go to town, crank it up. I have mine set to immediately jump right to the max speed as soon as it's done that first layer. So it's slow, 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 boom, go. Just get it done. It's a quick printer and it's quiet. Now running it fast, of course, it gets noisier because you got the noise from the steppers. But um, it's a quiet printer. I mean, this for a you know, stock consumer printer, it's a quiet printer. I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed. I think TiVo nailed it. I think they did a good job. I applaud them for correcting a lot of issues. There's, I see no salmon skin issues. Um, I see no stepper skipping issues. I mean, I was pff, running this thing hard, and it never skipped a step. I don't know what that noise is. I think that's something in the electronics. I, think, I, I have to assume that because the construction is top notch, just like the Ender Two. Okay, it's 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 virtually it's virtually virtually a duplicate of the Ender Two. I mean, it's it's the same thing. It's it's V slot rails, V slot wheels. The wheels are good quality. They roll fine. I have no problems. The plastic isn't wearing or shedding its skin badly or anything like that. Not like cheap ones. It's 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 working perfectly. The belts feel good. The rails feel good. All the screws are tight. Everything is equilateral triangle balanced. They did it right. Let me double check that one. Yes, it is perfect equilateral triangle. So this is never wiggling. There is no play. There is no play. There is no play in any direction. Nothing. It is, it's tight as a net's, you know what. <laughs> so I don't think it's mechanical noise. At least I hope it's not mechanical noise. Um, the only other thing that might that might be an issue is this the the rod is rigid and I don't know if rigid is the right way to do it um, having a little play in this might be better if this is perfectly straight if this is absolutely perfect and rigid is great my suspicion is that if this is not perfectly straight and you bind it tight then it can't flex, it can't give. And if it can't give, it's going to push in response to not being able to flex, which means it's going to push on this assembly. And that might be 
not enough for you to be able to see it move, but enough for you to see that. For you to see those imperfections in the layer. And that's, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm going to check the coupler, see how straight the coupler is. Now I have two of them I can run them side by side. I'll print a nose cone on this in the same green and see if it does any better. Um, but I'll check the coupler. I'll check the rod. Maybe I'll try loosening this and letting the rod play a little bit. Maybe get rid of the bearing and just let the rod float inside the hole. That hole will be enough to capture it so it can't be pushed and bent out. Maybe that'll be enough to allow it to float uh, recording limit for time. Um... Maybe that'll do it. At least that'll confirm because this will hold this in place. You don't need the rod to hold it in place. The rod should not be guidance. The rod should only be movement. This is your guidance, not this. But if you make this rigid, this becomes guidance. And if this isn't perfectly straight, you see, you see here? See how I'm moving it a little bit? And how it moves the rest a little bit? Well, if this binds up, it's going to push on the rest of this. And maybe that pushing as the rod turns is just enough to give you that little bit of noise. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this. I think it's going to take someone like Tom or somebody like that to go into this and figure that out. Um, I don't think I have the skill yet to do that, but I can do trial and error. So on a hunch, I'm going to remove these two screws that are pinning the bearing. And I'm going to remove the bearing and I'm going to let the rod float. And I'm going to see if that changes anything. But don't let that turn you off. The Like I said, the difference is so incredibly subtle, it's ridiculous. You are never, ever going to notice it in real life. This thing is truly, truly a nice machine. I would not hesitate to tell somebody to buy this for the $210 they're charging for it. Um, I'm going to hold back just because I want to use it for a while. You know, I don't... I don't just slap a blessing on a printer, <laughs> but I can't see a fault. I mean, it's all metal. There isn't a single 3D printed thing on this. It's all heavy duty metal brackets, thick metal brackets. Anet, Tronics, why are you listening? Thick metal brackets. Everything is thick. <laughs> I like picking on them. They make, they make everything thin to shave costs, but everything on here is thick and heavy duty. The rails feel heavy duty. They are thick. They are clean. I don't see any burrs. I see no problems. They did a good job. So, kudos, Tivo. You did a good job. Work on your customer support. <laughs> be nice. You got good machines. Now, be nice. You know, make it work. You know, compete. This is a good start. The tornado is a good start. This is a good start. I have high hopes for the future from these Chinese manufacturers. Let's see where it takes us. More to come on the Michelangelo.